Hello Cyber Explorers, do you know over 300 million fraudulent logins are attempted on cloud services such as Microsoft Azure every day, averaging over 3,500 hits per second? But luckily, 99.99% of them do not succeed due to the use of something called the multi-factor authentication systems. In case you are wondering what this revolutionary technology is, how it works, and how you can set it up for yourself, you have to watch this till the end of this video. First, we will go through a brief theory, then play a small quiz, and finally I will show you how you can write a simple Python function and use an app on your phone to implement this feature in your projects. So let's get started. I am XK and welcome to Cyber Explorer. Starting with the fundamental concept of multi-factor authentication or MFA in short. In a nutshell, it is a mechanism that involves using multiple methods back to back for authenticating the same target in a given session. Well, what kind of target you ask? The target can be a person or a device. What kind of session you ask? Uh, it's like a small time interval within which the authentication using both of the methods must be completed. Otherwise, you have to do it all over again. What kind of methods you ask? Mm, that's a good question. Let's discuss it now. The methods or factors as they are referred to are individual ways of authenticating something or someone and they fall into one of these three broad categories. Number one, something you know like a password or PIN. Then you have security questions like the city you were born the name of your first bit, etc. Number two, something you possess. It usually refers to something that only you are supposed to have. Others may be able to see them but cannot possess them without your permission. Examples, email ID, phone number, key card, your smartphone or just simple your metal key. Then number three, something you are. It refers to something that defines you or something that only you can do like putting your fingerprint on a biometric scanner or scanning your face or voice. Now the voice and the facial recognition techniques aren't that strong, especially because one can use your picture or recording to bypass that. However, a lot of work went into it in the last decade and these systems aren't that dumb anymore. Until Deepfake, a highly sophisticated AI model stepped into the scene and challenged them a big time. We'll talk about deepfake in detail in some of the future videos on this channel. For now, let's stick to the main topic of today's discussion, which is multi-factor authentication systems. And for now, you can use facial and voice recognition techniques to unlock your smartphones without worrying much. It is important to note that the multiple factors you're about to use must belong to different categories listed above and not simply multiple factors from the same categories. Otherwise, it won't be that effective and in a way would defeat the actual purpose. This is a piece of advice in general. There might be exceptions though. Now it's time to look at some of the uses of multi-factor authentication systems. You wanna purchase something online or transfer money to your friend through PayPal, Venmo or Zelle? No? Okay. You wanna sign up for a new app or a website or log in to say your bank account or your primary email address or maybe verify your identity at the airport? We got you covered. Just turn on the two-factor authentication or MFA option on the respective portal settings and add your email address and phone number. That's it. Haha. <laughs> okay, the last example might be somewhat counterintuitive. I deliberately put that to remind you how we use multi-factor authentication in our daily lives too without actually realizing it. More on that in the next slide. To make the concept clear, we will go through some examples like a quiz and I want you to participate. There are three examples. You have to guess the two factors that can be involved in each of these scenarios. I will prompt you to pause and think and check if our minds are connected. Anyway, if you have different answers, don't worry. Just comment down the answers with a brief explanation or context and I will reply to it, definitely. But before starting this quiz, hit the subscribe button now. Otherwise, I will send you a phishing email and log into your YouTube account and do it myself. So do it now. 
already subscribed good thanks let's begin the quiz number one you want to send money to your friend online what could be the two factors involved pause this video and give it a shot i assume you had already guessed it here is my response a password or a pin that you use to log into a bank portal there is something you know and then you request for an otp on your phone which is something you possess so someone needs to have both your phone and the knowledge of your password or pin to complete the transaction which isn't that easy now moving on to number two the example from the previous slide identity check at the airport what are the two factors that could possibly fit the scenario pause this video and think for a few seconds your timer starts now done good here is my answer you need your id or passport that contains the details about you already verified by a third party agency there is something you possess and of course you need yourself no one can carry your id and pass through the checking and also you cannot show someone else's id and expect to get away with it to get verified you need to be present there and show your own id so two factor now let's look at the last example which is about unlocking your smartphone can you guess the factors involved here pause this video and try for yourself your timer starts now this will be easy we should be getting good at this by now so here's my answer you need your phone this belongs to the list of possession now you have two options you can either choose something that's part of you you can either use a fingerprint scanner or a facial recognition the other way is by using something you know like a pin or a pattern lock you might have noticed we never choose multiple factors from the same type as pointed out earlier also remember something that cannot be duplicated or stolen can be potentially the strongest form of authentication so involving a part of yourself in the authentication uh, in some way can ensure a higher degree of security just a suggestion if you had different answers write them down in the comments with an explanation and i will review for you now it's time for some implementation on python yay the goal is to generate an otp or a one time password on your phone and check if the python code running on your pc also generates the same pin at the same time frame we'll be using google authenticator app it was a first two factor authenticator and it is free so navigate to your app store and install it on your phone right now done good now we have a few libraries to install on your laptop first install the py otp library as we need to generate the otp on the pc as well to set up the authenticator on the phone we would be generating a qr code which we will be scanning using the google authenticator app so install the qr code library and since it is an image we need to install the pillow or the python imaging library as well done great finally let's go to the jupyter notebook and implement it right now as usual we have separate sections for the import you should do it as well first we begin by calling the otp generating constructor with a 16 byte secret key which essentially acts as a seed and is supposed to be user specific we store it as t to run this we need to import the py otp library and print the value of t as expected it is an object so we call the now function to get the passcode next by calling the provisioning uri function we got to mention the corresponding id or name of the user and the issuer name which is same as the company name and store it as or str in case you wonder this is how it looks like it has all the information needed by the app on your phone now we generate a qr code for the authentication string call it ing and of course import the qr code library and finally display the image so you have the qr code that you need to scan using your app only once to complete the setup the first pass code matched on the phone screen on the right which is expected it is going to change after every 30 seconds to double check if they stay in sync i print the current pass code 
and you can see it matches again. You can try as many times as you want, it will always work. Once set up, it will stay synced with your phone forever. Neither do you need to keep the app running in the background, nor you need to stay connected to the internet. Now to integrate this on your web app, you need to generate the QR code during the user sign up and every time the user attempts to log in, you have to invoke the user's usual user ID password based system. If they succeed, you need to ask the passcode from their phone and check the t.now value against their entry. If it matches, they are multi-factor authenticated. That's it. Congrats, you have successfully learned the concept of multi-factor authentication systems with some examples and a quiz and how to integrate it into your projects. I have uploaded a part of the code in the GitHub repository whose link you can find in the description below. A part of it is left intentionally blank for you as an exercise so that you can try it on your own after watching this video and check if it is completely clear to you. And that's all I have for today. Please don't forget to subscribe and show your appreciation for all my efforts and hit the like button if you think it was helpful. And thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or topic suggestions for the future video, write it down in the comments below. I will see you soon. Until then, stay safe and stay curious.